Well, what are we fixing today? Today, back to some old stuff I used to do. Do a little bit more of this stuff now. i am uh, got a lot of things fixed around the house, and I'm going to still do some of that, but we're going to work on the computer today. So, to that end, I bought myself a valve, which was pretty cheap. AliExpress didn't seem, think much of it, but somebody had bought one, and on Discord they said, hey, this is pretty slick. So I bought one, and it's pretty slick. It actually works. It's um, outside, Zigbee. It's near the house. I'm using a Z2M interface with it. Picks it up just fine. The thing, uh, you tell it to turn on, it turns on. You tell it to turn off, it turns off. And then it has a backup timer built in so that it'll never run longer than that backup timer every time you turn it on. So uh, it's doing what it ought to. I like it. I'm going to now... I bought it because our community has changed, has built a different water system because the state has mandated they do so. The old water system used all well water and had un, um, unhealthy amounts of radium in the water, according to EPA standards. So, they are pumping water in from elsewhere anyway. Big cost. The cost of our water has tripled. Okay, um, nothing I can do about it. Other than, I can use less. Now, all prior years, I've used a sprinkler hose, um, kind of a... Part of it sprays, part of it just drips, uh, run through the garden. I guess I can add a picture to it here somewhere, right? I used this drip system and I just every day ran it for an hour, just water to garden. Because water is kind of cheap, it didn't really matter much. Now with the water kind of expensive, I bought this valve and this valve will allow me to water when I want and how much I want. However, I have to create a cute animation or two to make this happen. I have thought about this and I think I know what I'm going to do, but you along with me are going to stumble through how to write this automation. Actually, it's going to be two automations and, uh, you know, I'll probably throw away some of it, but pretty much all the mistakes I make, I'm going to show you. And uh, in the end, you'll have an automation which you can just copy and use if you want. Or if you want to see how I go through my process and do the automations, then it'll be there for you, buddy. All right. This integration, written by Pretturo, and what what this is is a complex math thing that I don't understand the math for, but we're going to use it in a linear manner. Basically, what it is, you read here and kind of see what's happening. In my case, I'm going to monitor yesterday's rainfall. And I'm, so I'm going to do an automation that happens before midnight, close to the end of the day. And it will look at how much rain has fallen that day. I know I could probably do some time, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really matter for this case. I'm going to make a, basically a sensor, right? ish and what what's going to happen is it's going to monitor the amount of rain that happened the day before and if there is more than a quarter inch of rain it's going to not turn on the sprinkler at all and if there's less than two hundredths of an inch of rain it's going to turn it on for a full hour and i might adjust these these are my first guess and in between there, it's going to prorate it. So if it rains, let's see, half of point, if it point, rains 0. 0.125 inch of rain, it's going to be watering for 30 minutes. This compensation integration is going to help me do that. And it'll just base, I'll be able to send out a number of seconds based on the amount of rain, one to one ratio. Uh, so let's hope it works. I haven't used it before. So let's see. A single polynomial, a linear single polynomial. I know 
poop about math. So thank you. I don't know what that is, but I think it's going to work well for me. <laughs> it's, math is not me, man. All right. To enable it, add the following to configuration of the ML. So... Okay, so just so you can see what I did way up there, I added, I uh, hope you can see the cursor, I think you can, I added compensation, include compensation.yaml. This will mean that I can put stuff in a file called compensation.yaml in the same folder, and that's where I'll do my work. So this is the stuff I copied from right out of the docs here in the sample so oh, we're gonna make some changes to this of course i'm going to change the source i don't need an attribute yep i don't need an attribute or a unit of measure go away I do want the lower limit, I do want the upper limit, and my data points. So I'm going to say that if it's 0 0.02, 0 0.02, it's going to be Minus 60, and I'll explain the minus. Uh, I don't know if this can do an X. In other words, as my rain goes up, I want my timer to go down so the two lines would cross. And I don't think it works like that. There might be a way to set this up so it does. It's a linear progression. So when one goes up, the other goes up. So if I say minus 60, and that will be referring to how many seconds, I mean, how many, how many minutes that this will run. I could just say minus 60 uh, up to the other one. And then I can just take the absolute value of that and send that to minutes. The actual numbers will be correct. They will just be inverse, right? Sort of negative instead of positive. So if it rains 0.02 or less, because if you look at here, and source, uh, if it's less than, here, yeah, I'll just say, let's put it in there just to make it square. If it's less than 0.02, it's still going to do 60. Everything 0.02 or less is going to be 60 by saying yes to lower limit or true to lower limit. If you say true to upper limit, Anything that's, and we're going to put in here 0 0.25 as the upper limit of how much rain. At that point, we're going to have zero time on the, uh, for watering. And then, like I said, I'm going to take the output of this sensor and take the absolute value of it which will strip the minus and then at say 0 0.02 it's going to be um 60 minutes and at 0.123 or something because this is a little above it's going to be 30 minutes uh it's going to come out as minus 30 and i'm going to absolute value it so that's that's how i'm going to deal with the not crossing but linear yeah, linear, linear. Boy, screen is backwards. Thumbs up. So, 
I'm not going to call it this. I'm going to call it sprinkler time. And the source is going to be not media player. It's going to be sensor, blah, 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 blah rain, right, piezo. So this is daily. It resets every day at midnight. So in the entities, I have compensation sensor, whatever. Sensor, compensation sensor, here's the name of it. So it adds sensor.compensation sensor to the beginning of whatever the other name was. I also noticed that it's unmanageable. So I think you can use, I think you can, I'm going to go over here, I think you can put in an ID. I think that's one of the things, unique ID. So we're going to put this in here as well, because I like that in there. So sprinkler time has a name, but I don't know what that name does. Maybe it's a friendly name. Maybe it's nothing name. <laughs> so, no. Unique ID. And my idea for unique ID is uh, I'm in a VS Code, Code Server, whatever, in an add-on. I right-click, bring up Command Palette. No, I don't need to. Generate UUID at cursor. Boom. And the cursor's in the wrong place. So, let's put the cursor back where it belongs. Right-click, Generate. And there I have a perfectly good unique ID. And I'll be able to bring this up in the UI and such. But sensor dot compensation, so it puts the word compensation in between there. Otherwise, it's going to be the same kind of word. That's the name of it. Now, I added a unique ID. I'm going to restart Home Assistant again. That one. Uh, excellent. <laughs> Here, this is the one we want. And here we have, tells me the coefficients and the blah, blah. But in, in, in effect, the, the automation that's going to run that is going to happen at like 5 a.m., right? So 5 a.m., when it reads the sensor, it's going to read the rain from today. I'm going to run an automation just before midnight to capture this number on the screen. And that will be the number that I feed into the automation for running the actual sprinkler. So let's make an automation to capture this. Now I might as well save this. Copy that baby. Now we're going to go into the automation editor. Settings. Automations. We're just going to use the GUI because people like the GUI. So, create an automation. Create a new automation. When. Add trigger. Time. Hmm. That's interesting. An hour before sunup is probably ideal because it can run for an hour, right? So let's... Let's do sun, let sunrise, offset in seconds, 3600. So it's going to start an hour before sunrise, and it's going to be a little different time every day. Oh, awesome, right? That's our trigger. We don't need a condition. Then do add action. This is me doing the UI, guys. I don't do the UI, so I'm trying to do this in such a way. Helpers. 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 Input number. Set value. Create a new number helper. Here it is. Okay, we're going to create a new one. It's going to be called Sprinkler Time.
sprinkler time give me an icon what are we on here sprinkler hey look at that minimum value zero maximum value 60 great save all right now simply this will run an hour before sunrise and set this number now i need to change that or this clear that You go into the template editor and you just go play with it. And it doesn't like that. So, let's see what I got wrong. So, I got that right, but it's coming out as a, as text. If there was anything I wanted to say, I wanted it to be not raining, so sixty. It's my default. So I'm defaulting here to sixty. And there we go. So that was the problem. The number that's coming out from the Compensation sensor is not a number, it's text. I have to convert that to a number. So I'm converting it to a float here, and I'm defaulting to 60. And what that does to me is, if there is no data here, or this is broke, or this ain't working, it's gonna set this to 60. Um, so then I take that, once it's converted to a number, and run it through absolute filter, and we have a positive number. All right, so this is what we have to add. I will take this. I will go back into automations. What did I call it? Sprinkler something. Is that sprinkler runtime? Okay, so it's still here. Go down here. Let's edit this. So now I have, I've, this eliminates the need for the quotes. I have states.sensor compensation, blah, 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 dot state. That gives me back a text that looks, that, that looks like a number. I need to take that and send it through a float filter to make it an actual number. If this does not exist or is broken or something, the default will be set this to 60 and I'm gonna take the absolute value of this uh, looking like a number number and it should give me it should put the input number sprinkler time it should set that to whatever it is so save this now I'm going to run it Ran successfully. Let's see. Ah, there it is. So now if I go into hammer, well this is the automation it's on, but the value of sprinkle input sprinkle input number that we created is the correct number that we created. It's not a negative number, it's a positive number. So there we go. Now let's copy this name here, because we're gonna need this. Now let's create another automation. Yes. 
automations. We're just going to use the GUI because people like the GUI. So, create an automation. Create a new automation. Automation. Add trigger. Time. Sun. Minus 3600. Got that? We'll come back to that. I'll get this one first. Add action. Uh, device. Garbage. Garden. And on garden. And building block. Delay. Wait for trigger, wait for time to pass. I'm just going to put in a number in there for now as a placeholder, and then we're going to add the template. So we'll do this kind of like thing. And add action, device, device, garden, turn off garden, save. Save. So it's going to turn on the garden delay for, okay, the placeholder is 30. So I'm going to set this to, am I in your way? I'm going to set this to uh, some other number, right? For when I, uh, this is going to be a template and then it's going to turn off the garden. So. Let's go back up here and put this back in. Add condition. Search condition. So now what did I say? Entity. Rain. Input Boolean rain. State. Has to be off for this to work. And I don't need a time. So. Save. Well, let's see what this really looks like in real terms. I highly suggest you people learn what this looks like and what's going on. This saves you a lot of headaches. Oh, I hate this. I really, really hate this. It's in this, I mean, yeah, it works, but holy crap, is that hard to troubleshoot. Man. All right. The delay is going to be. Not that minutes. Can I put a template in there? I sure hope I can. All right. So state that input number sprinkler time dot states. If that's coming out as text, which it might be or might not, I'm not really sure. Uh, convert it to a float and then this is the number and if you don't have this if this ain't available i mean it's going to be already default to 60 but if right. this isn't available when sun rises do a trigger confirm it's not raining turn it on delay four turn it off so the delay four should look like a template let me just i'm just going to test i'm going to take this Paste it into the template test thingies. Uh, template designer. State is undefined. Well, let's make sure this is correct. Oh, 
states.state. .state. That's better. All right. So I had that wrong. I had the words, the, I had the S in the wrong place. So let's go back to here, automations, sprinklers, water to garden sprinkler, on here, delay for. Dates on input number sprinkler dot state. So this will return the text value of the input number, send it to a float, default to zero, turn the minutes. So that's how many minutes. So save. If I Come in here. I think there's a way to force a trigger, right? Event. Event. Event type. DHAQ blast action. Event data. Doesn't matter. Save. So now, if I do something with the cube, it should trigger this. So, do something with the cube. Let's look at the traces. It's 24, 16. 1446, yes, it definitely triggered. Well, I want to change the automation a little bit more. Um, little trick I've learned. Sprinkler, water garden, if you... Set a variable. You can then read what that variable is later. So, I think I can do that in here. Right here. Maybe? Nope. Somewhere I saw add variable. There's a place to do it. I don't know where it is, but I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna do it right after the trigger. Where bulls? I am going to add. this in minutes and put that in there right Copy, and then here, I'm just going to put in that variable. Now, it seems silly, right? Why? Well, the reason is it will report variables in the trace. So I'll know what this is. So that's what I want to check. And down here, it should just run. It'll pick up this and then go. And here, it'll actually do the calculation. Now, this is also handy because 
you can if you want to change this calculation it's up at the top in variables so it makes a lot of sense for a maintenance pro, uh, process i mean for one thing eh, right if you got a bunch of stuff this is very handy and especially when you want to try to run something and you want to see what the value is so i'll show you the difference should be fine it's all fine here we go back to edit and visual editor see if it's crabby doesn't seem to care doesn't say anything about anything so let's change the screen over to that one that we can't see very good there's the garden thing so let's pick up this turns it on so that's fine now let's look over here at the trace so now i should be able to go there the change variables and run minutes 31.3 so the actual number is getting through and then here in the trace Wow, this is weird. Here in the trace, <laughs> you can see it right there, right there. All right, cool. Go back. Now, obviously, I don't want the garden to water. Well, let's go. Let's go over here. Right set. turn the water back off back over here now I'm taking out this trigger because I don't want um, cut disable delete delete trigger I don't want every time I move my cube I don't want it to start watering the guard that would be kind of weird but that's how you like fake a trigger right you have a trigger and now i can't actually test that the sun trigger here will actually work but i'm pretty confident it will uh, i might have this wrong or something so uh, what i'll do is tomorrow i'll look at uh the trace from this and make sure it happened at the right time but uh, see here what this is going to do is it's going to just an hour before sunrise it's going to confirm it's not raining it's going to turn on the water. It's going to delay for the amount of time that's created by the compensation sensor. Currently, that's set to 31 minutes. And if it rains more today, it's the number is going to go down. It's, then it's going to turn off the guard. And if somehow all this fails and Home Assistant resets and it doesn't know what to do, the max that will happen in the water in the garden is 61 minutes because that's what the um, fail-safe timer is set to on the hardware itself now, now if it doesn't know how much rain or that sensor breaks or home assistant breaks all those things will default to not letting it turn on at all so I think we got it I will share this to everyone in the bottom in the description um, you can take a look at it one more time here in real stuff oh, it gets so confusing Get it in yellow. so water garden sprinkler turn the sprinkler on for a set time the trigger will be sunrise actually 3600 seconds before sunrise which is an hour 60 seconds per minute 60 minutes per hour 60 times 60. then it will make sure that it's not raining I'll give you that automation as well. Well, mine's going to be different than yours in like every case there. So I can give it to you. It doesn't, it's fine. But um, this is coming from my weather station and it's looking at the hourly rain rate. And if the hourly rain rate is above zero, it turns on this input pulley. And if it's not above zero, it turns it off. All right. So, so the most that that can turn on is once an hour. Then 
It comes in and uses a device and entity ID, scrambles, mess, crap, gerby, gerber, gobble, 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 whatever the hell you call this messy stuff. Sh- sh- I hate device IDs. Have I mentioned that lately? It takes these device, the device ID, which is the garden switch that I bought. That's uh, that you know that's in the description as well, and it's a picture of it is on the the thumbnail. It's going to turn that on. Then it's going to delay for run minutes as set by the variable statement run minutes which is this number that comes from the compensation sensor then after after it starts to run it's going to delay that long and then it will turn off so if this says one minute it's going to turn on one minute turn off uh, if this says 60, it's going to run for 60. Right? Well, there's the sensor. There, there. Ha! I found it. There's the uh, Rain Seer Zigbee thing. I give that thing a big thumbs up. That seems to be working just fine. I've used it a little bit now, turned it on manually, but now it's going to be running every day so that when I'm on vacation or I'm whatever i don't have to figure out if it rained the day before and then turn on the water and how long to turn it on and blah 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 blah. so this will help you out it's also going to reduce my water uh usage rate for the summer and only dump on the garden what it pretty much needs i may have to adjust those numbers i don't know guessing they'll be okay since last year i did an hour every day both time raining or not so this is going to be less water. It's fine. If I think I need to reduce it more, I can. But generally, I think I like a little more water than less on my garden. So that's all good. If um, you know all the all the code should be below. Uh, if I missed something, let me know. If this helps you, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate thumbs up. And uh, subscribers are always welcome. I could use subscribers. I'm trying to get myself uh, trying to be able to turn on uh, uh, ads that actually pay me and if you have an ad blocker well thanks anyway but otherwise you know if you want to help me out some other way there's some other links down there it could be a patreon whatever until next time always get the right amount of water on your plants bye